from the UK and currently presides on the Islamic Sharia Council of Britain and is also the founder of the website www.islam21c.com. We have been talking about the permissibility of websites and where do we draw the line. So we'd like to continue that, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. In terms of websites, you were just mentioning about the issue of a sister putting the picture onto the website. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulillah. It is not about the sister putting her picture on websites. It is about what are the Sharia guidelines regarding using websites for marriage? Mm -hmm. Okay, for finding a potential spouse. First of all, we said, let us talk to the people in charge of those websites or those brothers and sisters who are interested in building websites or organizations that facilitate marriages through websites, yeah, mm -hmm. or through online facilities or through maybe social media. So we said that there are certain problems, okay, that need to be addressed. The first one was, are the people in charge of the website allowed to browse the details of the clients freely in detail? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and those details, those details include detailed description of the opposite gender, in particular brothers reading the details of sisters, as if they see those sisters. This is reading the details, so this is one thing. The other thing is, the brothers in charge of those websites, are they allowed to look at the photos of those sisters? Mm. And this discussion brought to us the issue of sisters putting their photos yeah, online, whether for the purpose of marriage or for other purposes. Yeah? And by the way, this reminds me of the discussion related to sisters giving public lectures. Mm -hmm. yeah? Sisters giving public lectures. What do we mean by giving public lectures? Sisters giving public lectures to brothers and sisters. It became a common practice in some da'wa organizations in some countries. And I have to say that this is haram, this is haram, this is haram. It is not a matter of fiqhi opinion. Mm. Yeah? It is not a matter of ijtihad. And those shiyukh, those scholars who gave fatwas that this is acceptable, they made a mistake. It is not an acceptable opinion at all. Okay, why is this? Why is this? First of all, even if we say that the face is not a aura, yeah, the face is not a aura, the face of a female is not a aura. If we say that it is not a aura, it doesn't mean that we as men are allowed to gaze, gaze at it, stare at it. Yeah, why is this? Because the Prophet وسلم, said, Huh? Okay? Don't follow the first glance with the second glance. So this is clear. Now, it is clear that Allah Jalla says, mm. Command the believers to lower their gaze. Gaze. Yes? One gaze. The gaze in general. Yeah, one gaze. But the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Hadith Ali, is more explicit. Don't follow the first glance with the second glance. The first one will be halal, okay? Because it happened all of a sudden. It was not planned, by the way. No one can say that the first glance is allowed if it is planned. Yeah, and he, for example, I passed by and there is a sister and I intentionally look at her, especially with desire. The Prophet Sallallahu is not talking about this. The Prophet Sallallahu is talking about it happened that you saw her. So the first is for you, not the second one. Mm. Okay? See, nowadays, what we are talking about, I think, is odd. Because there is no country now in the Muslim world and in the non-Muslim world where the person can protect his eyes from seeing women, okay, with no hijab, with, okay, revealing clothes, everywhere. Mm. 
And that's why the Prophet said, When the lady goes out, yeah, then there will be a shaytan with her. طبعاً, there will be a shaytan with all of us, but in particular with women, in order to attract men to look at them. Yeah? And as many scholars said, and I remember a very beautiful statement by Sheikh Ali Tantawi. He said, and by the way, I found it the very similar statement by one of the previous scholars, one of the scholars from the fourth Hijrah or fifth Hijrah century. He said, if you are married to all women in the world except one, yeah, the shaitan will come to you and will tell you that, listen, this has something unique and you don't find it with all these women. In order to what? Look. In order to look. Yeah. Now, see, the enemies of Islam, they say, look what Islam says about women that the shaitan will go with her. I don't see what is the problem. The shaitan is everywhere. Mm. Yeah. Okay. The shaitan is trying to seduce us. The shaitan is trying to misguide us. Constantly. Okay. Constantly. And this, by the way, shows the power of women. And by the way, this shows our weakness as men. Yeah. Okay. So they say, well, men have to control themselves. Yeah, Akhi, this is, I'm talking about my weakness. And we have to admit that this is the weakness of men. Some people would say it's the fault of the man if he's looked at the woman. Okay, it is my fault, but at the end of the day, it is a fault. Mm. And I cannot control myself. And is the gaze there for a second time because the sister has not taken the appropriate steps? Yes. And as they always say, you know, even in Britain, you know, they say don't leave valuable things in your car. Don't give them opportunity. Mm. Okay, so we cannot tell the thief, yeah, or the thief cannot say, well, I saw an opportunity, yeah, I am excused. No one would say this. No thief will say this. It's true that we will blame the thief, but at the end of the day, the person who lost the property, he did not protect his property, yeah? He knows that there are thieves, so he needs to protect his property, mm. okay? So this is one issue. It is not allowed to stare, to gaze, to keep staring and gazing at the face of a female who is not mahram. Mm. Again, don't tell me about cases of necessity, yeah? For me, as a man, attending a lecture of a sister that she's talking about fiqh of marriage. Subhanallah. Okay, look at a man or a sheikh who is more qualified to speak about fiqh of marriage. Right? Some brothers, they say there were some female teachers who used to teach Sahih al-Bukhari. Yeah, Akhi, don't go for a female teacher who is teaching Sahih al-Bukhari. There are thousands of scholars who teach Sahih al-Bukhari. Why did you choose to go for a female teacher that he teaches Sahih al-Bukhari? This is one thing. And the other thing, who said that those shaykhat or ustadat or female teachers who used to teach hadith books such as Sahih al-Bukhari or Muslim or so, they were teaching them like this sitting in front of men. I challenge, see, I challenge every single one by all the brothers and sisters to bring me a quotation where one of the female scholars used to sit directly in front of men, directly. So there were always shields men. then? Huh? There was always some kind of shield? Yes, a shield or maybe a another setup. There is no explicit, I did not come across any explicit situation where a female teacher used to sit in front of men and the men, the students are looking at her and she teaches them Sahih al-Bukhari or Sahih Muslim. Mm. Yeah? I have never seen this. And I reviewed a number of the great muhaddithat. And to see how they used to teach the hadith. And it was not mentioned. If there is anyone to prove the contrary of this, let him or her bring this. Mm. This is one thing. The other thing is, see, the fact that Allah Jalla wa Ala let men only to lead the salah, yeah, and to give khutbah, and not to 
allow women, even he allowed them to lead salah for other women, but he never allowed them to give khutbahs. Yeah? This gives an indication that, well, there is a difference between men looking at women and women looking at men. Yeah? The men will be attracted to women by looking at them, but women will not be attracted, yeah, by just looking at uh, men. Otherwise, men would be commanded to cover their faces as well. Okay? This is another element of why we said that those female speakers addressing men directly is not allowed from an Islamic perspective, let alone that she will laugh, she will crack jokes, and people will laugh with her, and the nature of the setup will not be a setup that promotes, you know, decency. Imagine, Akhi, a sister, yeah, a sister, yeah, any uh, average sister, average sister will have a level of attraction. She says, oh, brothers, fear Allah, yeah, and increase your iman. Don't go for anything that decreases your iman. Don't look at sisters. She will address us this. Be careful. Looking at sisters might be haram. The Prophet ﷺ is saying, huh? the glance is like an arrow, a poisoned arrow mm -hmm. from the arrows of the shaitan. Will she say something like this? Or the sister is talking about Qiyamul Layl. And then she starts crying because of Qiyamul Layl. And the brothers are looking at her and they are crying because they have listened to an admonition about Qiyamul Layl or about Jannah and Nar, about Hur'een in Jannah. Imagine a sister, yeah, is describing Hur'een in Jannah in front of brothers. Straight. Yeah? Is this acceptable? Have we ever seen this or heard about something like this in our Islamic history? If there is a case or so, these are just odd cases. This is not the norm. Come on. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. We'll come back soon after the break to continue this discussion. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I wanted to share with you, to share with you some of the some ayat the of the Quran, of the Quran and some of the ahadith of, of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Care and affection, guidance and encouragement, dedication and vision. Which give us an indication and an instruction. Uplifting the horizons of the child in an Islamically sound way. As to how to be good Muslim parents. parents. Muhammad Tim Humble. Welcome to a brand new series. 26 ways to be a good Muslim good parent. Muslim parent. Imbibe the various qualities of ideal parents essential for their children's upbringing and betterment from 26 ways to be a good Muslim parent. Every Friday at 11.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Dialogue. Dialogue. Discussion. 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 Debate. 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 Rebuttal. 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 Conclusion. Conclusion. Eliminate misconceptions about religion. Get enlightened. Witness Dr. Zakir Naik in a battle of words in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 10 a.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, brothers and sisters, to this discussion where we shall continue talking about the permissibility of websites and where do we draw the line. So we'd like to continue that, Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You were just going over the issue of men looking at women and the difference when it comes to women looking at men. Yeah, we were discussing this issue of sisters presenting themselves on social media or giving lectures, public lectures, or displaying themselves, etc., etc. 
even if we say that the face of a female, an adult female, is not awra, this does not mean that a female can put herself on a state where men are gazing at her. Mm. See, when Sharia allowed the man to look at a potential wife, let us think about it again. The Sharia allowed for the man to look at to look at a woman who is planning to marry her. There's a good reason for this. Yeah, what I want to say. If that was permissible, and all the fuqaha said, you should do it, it is encouraged, or it is permissible. So what does that mean? It means that if you are not planning to marry her, if you are not proposing, if this is not a khitbah, mm. it means that you are not allowed to look at her. Exactly. Is it clear? Makes sense. Yeah. If it is not, okay, if they say, yes, and it is, وَيَجُوزُ لِلْخَاطِبَ النَّظَرُ إِلَىٰ مَخْطُوبَتِهِ This is what they say. All the fuqaha, even those fuqaha who allegedly, yeah, say that the face of a woman is not our. Okay? They use this statement that it is allowed for a proposing man to look at the potential wife. To look at her. What does to look at her mean? It means that if he is not planning to marry her, yeah, or he's not looking at her for this purpose of the khutbah, then it is not allowed. There's no need. All the fuqaha say that it is allowed for the doctor if there is a need to look at the female patient, which means that if there is no need for the man to look at her, then al-asl, the original principle, that a man is not allowed to look at the face of a female. Okay? Which means that the issue of aura, being aura or not aura, is something, and looking at the face of a female is something else. Also, this leads to the point that we are talking about. That a woman should not display her face in a place where she knows that other men are going to look at her. Now, if a female were to say, well, men should lower their gaze, come on. Sister, you are putting your face or your picture yeah, on a website that you know that men are going to visit that website. Okay, so you are displaying your face intentionally in a place where men are going to look at it. Is this allowed or not allowed? Definitely, as I said, it is not allowed. Mm. Okay. Let alone, my dear brothers and sisters, that we came across cases where brothers abused the photos of sisters. We have number of cases, we heard of number of stories. A brother is using the face of a particular sister. He wants to harm her, he wants to harm her family, and he is using Photoshop and other softwares, okay, in order to put her face on a pornographic picture. We have a number of cases. In fact, we came across a few cases, but they were there, unfortunately. Some men, some husbands, husbands abused the pictures and the photos of their ex-wives. Okay? It might be an extreme situation. A few cases came, but on the other side, some brothers abuse the pictures of some sisters. And in fact, some of them put the photos of some sisters on uh, pornographic images and the graphic in order to abuse them, in order to harass them, even blackmailing them and their families and so on. Okay? So that's why this issue, okay, this issue has to be taken into consideration carefully. Now, there are some other negative aspects that the pictures might not be real, yeah? The sisters might beautify themselves, okay? So the brother might not see the real picture, okay? The pictures might be downloaded, as we said, and they can be used 
they can be abused yeah mm -hmm. the sisters might play with their pictures by photoshop or other softwares in order to beautify themselves mm -hmm. okay and other scenarios i just remembered i just remembered one of the good websites yeah good websites that provide marriage facilities for brothers and sisters and it happened that there was an internal problem in the management of that website and a person has to leave and after that there were accusations of misusing the data of the individuals who proposed through this website mm. this was accusing this and this was accusing the other people and okay we could not verify who is who but the possibility of abuse and passing the details or leaking the details is there that's why we have to be careful now see if we take all these elements into consideration then inshallah that can be acceptable that can be acceptable so with the right precautions with the right steps taken yes possibly in some circumstances it that, might be okay yeah i know that maybe some people are even more strict than me and they say we should not use websites etc okay they say we have seen the negative outcome that is true but akhi, we need to be realistic mm. what many revert brothers and sisters or not even revert to brothers and sisters there are some people who do not have social networks around them yeah what can they do so possibly this as a very last resort I mean, yeah yeah this is a good way of putting it that it should be the last resort and as we said they can use many other avenues you know in the west it is good also to use the mosques mm. yeah but they usually have some kind of service yes 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 and by the way we always say to imams you are not an imam who is just leading the salah no. you should carry out the job of social services yeah in order to help people to get married because they really need this service again <laughs> again there might be some negative side effects where the imam if he is exposed to these details yeah we heard some stories where imams abused yeah. their position i mentioned a few stories I'm not talking about imams, I'm talking about brothers who might abuse, okay, certain opportunities. But the imams, yeah, they might abuse them as well. That's why Sharia said the rules, the guidelines, especially the guidelines when it comes to the interaction between brothers and sisters, have to be observed carefully. And the biggest fitna, as the Prophet ﷺ said, the biggest fitna for men is what? Women. Is women. Yeah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, اتقوا الدنيا واتقوا النساء. Be aware of the dunya, yes, and be aware of the fitna of women. SubhanAllah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. I think I just want to end this topic about the website specifically by saying that we spoke previously about the importance of family values and how it's the cornerstone of society. And possibly the reason why people have started to go to the website is because this is lacking or yes. missing. Yeah, yeah. SubhanAllah. That's true. Jazakumullah khair for watching this episode. Please join us again where we will continue to explore the different avenues of how we can approach a situation where we need to look for a potential spouse. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.